It's recording. Let's see. Let's get the live stream going. Okay, I think that's looking good. I'm going to go ahead and start pe letting people in now and we'll get started. Hey, welcome if you're joining us. We're just letting uh, people in, getting this uh, live stream going too. So we, um, you'll be either watching us here uh, in the Zoom call here, or some of you may be watching us at YouTube. Um, either way, feel free to you know comment in the respective uh, places. We'd be happy to collect uh, questions throughout this whole thing. And, and we'll get going in just a second here. I'm gonna let um, some people uh, join us here on Zoom. Um, in the meantime, uh, we'll have just some uh, Timeline, some cool infographics if you want to, um, you know, get ready to uh, think about the history of Tycho in the Pacific Northwest. Um, just get going in a few moments here. Thank you all for joining. Oh, good to see so many people here. All right, hey, everyone. I get a little ding dong every time someone comes in the room. It's it's filling up real fast. Hey everyone, if you're just joining us, uh, we're just getting started here, um, letting people into the Zoom room. Also, if you're watching us on YouTube, um, we're, we're really happy to have you. Um, uh, please feel free to comment in either space, and we'll try to get um, those you know uh, questions to the uh, to the panelists or just you know respond to uh, to you in either place. All right. Well, it is three o'clock, so um, just because of our limited amount of time, I'm gonna um, start introducing this thing, and then um, uh, you know, let's let's get going. Um, we'll have this both recorded here. It's also on YouTube uh, for anyone who's um, you know interested in you know joining us and wanted to see what happened a little bit earlier. Okay, so um, sorry, I'm letting people into it's it's funny. Uh, okay, I'm gonna um, <laughs> I'm gonna let a few more people in, and then I'm gonna uh, quickly introduce this thing. Um, okay. All right, it's so good to see everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Um, uh, really quickly, I want to introduce myself. My name is Gregory Wada. I'm the conference manager for the Tycho Community Alliance, uh, I guess about 14 months now. And so we're really uh, excited to be hosting a North American Tycho Conference Regional in Seattle, uh, Seattle this August. So um, as kind of you know warm up for that, we are having this special panel today um, that's going to be hosted by another program that TCA has that's called the TCA Leadership Program. This is a program that's uh, spearheaded by um, uh, our, our facility facilitators today, Roy Hirabayashi and Derek Oye. And this is a really great program because it's one that yeah, it really kind of facilitates intergenerational learning, kind of community learning between Taiko players. Um, they do both curricula through kind of class-like um, structures, as well as these kind of webinars like the one we have today. Um, I think it's such a kind of um, great connection with programs like NATC, which have, you know, for a long time brought, um, you know, communities of players together, highlighted local histories of Taiko. And, you know, these missions are really quite aligned. So we're, we're really um, happy to have uh, Roy and Derek, uh, who will be uh, facilitating that. So I'm going to pass it off to them. I just want to say uh, um, real briefly um, that um, we're also wanting to raise awareness. There was a, a fire in the Seattle um, Betsuin um, early in this year, and there's a, a fire relief fund that's currently going on. Um, Seattle Matsuri Taiko is one of the, or is the group based out of that temple there and and the, the Sangha has been very um, you know a part of the process in, in, in having the uh, NATCR in Seattle um, very generous with us um, so if we were to extend that generosity and, and encourage you um, if you wanted to help uh, with a relief fund to help um, cover the cost of that, that fire damage I'll be posting a link in the chat too and we'll mention that again at the end but uh, let's get going with that I'm going to pass it off to um, the TCA leadership program that's Roy Hirabayashi and Derek uh, Oye Take it away, Derek and Roy. Thanks, Greg. Um, nice to see everyone here. Thanks for joining in. Uh, my name is Derek Oye, and I'm part of Kinata Taiko. Hi, my name is Roy Hidabayashi. Um, I'm the co-founder of San Jose Taiko. It's great to see everybody. Thanks for joining in today. So let's see. We're today we have a panel of three people that's uh, representing in the Pacific Northwest. And I just want to, before we jump into this, I want to make sure that you're all on mute so that you don't conflict with the dialogue that's going on. Um, and we are recording this session, so uh, just to be aware of that. Uh, so if you 
um, for whatever reason, if you do don't want to be on the camera, just turn your camera off on that. Um, I'm going to ask the speakers just to self-introduce, and that way we won't waste too much time here. If you do have questions, do put it in a chat, and we'll try to come and try to pull some of those questions up towards the end. But uh, can we start first? Uh, I'm going to call first up as uh, Shinobu Homa, and then we'll have Stan <laughs> come in and we'll be next. So Shinobu, do you want to start us out with your self-introduction? Yeah. I am Shinobu Homa, and uh, I'm from Vancouver. And uh, um, well, do I explain uh, the involvement in Taiko, uh, right? Okay. Yes, yes. So. <clears throat> I immigrated to Canada in 1980, and uh, through a friend, uh, through a Tonarigumi, which is a seniors drop-in center, I met uh, Rick Shiomi. and so he's under friends are uh, trying to start the Taiko group, and he invited me to uh, join the you know kind of a, a session and uh, and. I went there and I was quite surprised by, you know, I've never seen uh, trying to practice on the tires, bunch of tires, that's it, right? And anyway, ever since I was a child, um, I was very fascinated by uh, sound of a taiko, you know, and every so often, just before the uh, Matsuri start, you can hear from the distance uh, taiko, right? <clears throat> anyway, but uh, my days, um, you know, the access to the taiko drumming was very limited. Only certain part of the society was able to, you know, play. So anyway, um, you know, that kind of a uh, the desire remained for a long, long time. Then uh, when I met uh, Rick Xiaomi, oh, this may be the chance. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but um, so um, I decided to join the group and uh, later on, uh, you know, that uh, the group named uh, Katari Taiko. That was the, the beginning of Katari Taiko, uh, which is the first Taiko groups uh, in Canada. So that was 19, they are saying, they, uh, you know, founding, uh, founder, uh, year was 1979, but the name actually, uh, you know, came in 1980. And ARIA members are basically, it's a predominantly Sansei Japanese Canadians and some Chinese Canadians, but all through Tonarigumi, they became a friend and very active in uh, community and uh, also, you know, advocates of uh, their uh, what they call it, social, social, social justice and so forth. And so, I was with the Katari Taiko till 1985, and I moved to uh, Toronto with my uh, wife Lucy, who was also a member of uh, Katari Taiko, and both of them. Both of us moved to Toronto 1985. With uh, her uh, sister, Leslie, we started a new group called the Wasabi Daiko. And Rick Xiaomi, who came from Toronto, actually joined later. And, and uh, so um, I was there for seven years. Then uh, when uh, my daughter, uh, turned six, we didn't want to uh, raise uh, my daughter in Toronto and rather, you know, our hometown, the Vancouver. So we moved back. And when uh, uh, my uh, daughter's name is Kayo, she turned six, she started asking, when can I play Taiko? So that's when, uh, you know, uh, we thought about uh, creating a group. And so among our friends, we gathered eight uh, young kids who are very similar uh, age range. And uh, so we, well, I and the two other uh, former Qatari members, we kind of uh, gathered 
uh, you know, eight, eight of them and start to try out uh, the teaching kids, which are very, very challenging. Anyway, um, so, um, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> so last year we had a 33 uh, Chibitai, well, I'm sorry, I didn't tell. <laughs> so we called uh, the group Chibitaiko because it's Chibi, a little kids. And uh, then uh, last year we had a 30th year anniversary. And right now, currently, we have 18 membership and in the range of uh, eight years old to 35 years old. And at the beginning, I thought, you know, as soon as they uh, finish high school, they will leave. But, you know, because over the year, they kind of uh, build a friendship and it becomes like, a, you know, brother and sisters, you know, they didn't want to leave. <laughs> so um, they are still there. And uh, two of them are actually um, our uh, president and vice president of the society, what we call uh, Chibi Taiko Society. And uh, yeah, so uh, that's my story. Great, thank you so much, Shinobu. Uh, Stan, you're you're next. Do you mind um, telling us your start? Sure. <clears throat> okay, so um, I did not grow up with Taiko, but when I went to college at UC Berkeley I, in the Bay Area, I saw San Francisco Taiko Dojo and San Jose Taiko perform many times. And at that point, I think they were the only two Taiko groups in the San Francisco Bay Area. Um, but I, I didn't imagine that I could be, you know, that good, that out there. So it didn't occur to me that I could play taiko until I moved to Seattle uh, in 1981. And I was staying with uh, a friend of a friend and his roommate was one of the founding members of Seattle Taiko Group. Uh, Seattle Taiko had just started in 1980, a year after Katari Taiko had. And that was as a result of uh, Onda Koza uh, coming through and doing a performance at Cherry Blossom in 1980. And it really excited the local Sansei community, especially, but Asian American community overall. So people got together. Uh, like Katari, they were practicing on tires for the first six months um, before they could get drums. Uh, and in the first year, I, I've heard that there were maybe 60 or 70 people who kind of cycled through to try it out. Some people stayed for two weeks, some people stayed for two months. But at the end of about a year, when they had gotten their drums together and had actually learned a couple songs, there were maybe about 12 or, or 14 people left. And so that was, they had their first performance in the summer of 81, a month before I arrived. And then they had a workshop a month after I arrived. And I, after that, I joined and I just fell in love with it hitting the drums and moving around and making noise uh, was lots of fun. Um, so I became a member of Seattle Taiko Group in 1981. Uh, eventually, uh, I left uh, along with two other members of Seattle Taiko Group to form, and we formed a small group called Kokon Taiko Ensemble. So we were inspired by hum drums, which was an offshoot of Katari Taiko, where they had three people just doing very creative, imaginative uh, things different than the big group Taiko, Taiko, Kumi Taiko, that was going on. So we thought we'd give that a try. And we found out that it's a lot harder than it looks. <laughs> so um, eventually in 1992, we re-emerged uh, with Seattle Taiko Group and became Seattle Kokon Taiko, and I've been with him ever since. Uh, in 2000, um, uh, another group in town, Tsunami Taiko, uh, uh, had started as a youth group, but like kind of like Chibi Taiko. I mean, they're, they're kind of a brother-sister group. Um, their teacher retired, and 
the older members, the senior members felt like they could continue playing, but they didn't feel like they could teach the, there's a group of young members who had just been playing a year or two. So they wanted to continue playing this young group and started looking for a teacher. And so asked me and we became Kaze Daiko in the year 2000. And I've been teaching them uh, since then. Um, I would say uh, the other important aspects of early on, uh, Seattle Taiko group was strongly influenced by San Francisco Taiko Dojo. We brought Tanaka Sensei up once or twice to give workshops. We were also inspired by Kinata Taiko, who came up to Seattle Betsuin to perform at Bonodori uh, two years in a row. And uh, we were fascinated watching them on stage. And then we had traveled down to, San, to the Bay Area and stayed actually with San Jose Taiko. Like they literally put us up in their homes and um, were <clears throat> inspired by them as well. So those were like our three kind of the three pioneer groups we all had contact with and were really our inspiration to to get going. Um, I guess I'll leave it at that and pass it off to Anne. Great. Thank you, Stan. And all right. Hello, everybody. Uh, it's exciting to be here and see some familiar faces and names. I'm Anne Ishimaru, and um, I'm Yonsei. And the group that I'm most uh, connected or, or, or known for, and, and I'm still connected with, is Portland Taiko, but I've had a couple of different groups. Um, so actually, my first, uh, when I tell the story, my first uh, 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 a performance and getting really inspired, it was actually in Seattle. Uh, so it must be Seattle Taiko when I was a kid and I couldn't, I was just blown away, um, you know, seeing especially Asian American women being so powerful and loud and I was so inspired, but it was like this secret thing. It wasn't until I got to college that I was like, okay, I'm going to do this. And um, Susan Hayate, who was um, from San Jose Taiko originally, um, was offering a class. She co-taught a class at Stanford um, and it was called Reparations Now. Um, so my introduction to learning Taiko was really bound up in the histories of Japanese Americans um, and Taiko as a, as a um, powerful build, uh, symbol um, and a kind of rallying um, sort of cultural uh, piece um, related to um, the histories of incarceration and then also of, of reparations. Um, and then our first uh, activity as we, uh, so Val, me and I uh, got together after the class along with other folks, um, um, Lindu Yechi, some who's, who's still very much involved with Stanford Taiko. Um, we had our first workshop with San Jose Taiko. So um, uh, that was a really um, important, uh, they were a very profound influence on us all the way through. Uh, we also got um, some teaching from uh, Jeannie and Russell um, and then Zach Sunke, who's my um, partner. Um, we, when we graduated, we stayed around for a little extra because we wanted to play Taiko some more. We were the second, that was, we were, I think the second Taiko, uh, collegiate Taiko group. And then moved up to Portland, um, where we met folks like Valerie Otani, um, June Schumann, Kyle Kajihiro, um, and uh, uh, actually, Lynn, I can see Lynn is on the on the call today too. Um, and so uh, that was in 1994. Uh, we uh, Portland Tech was going to turn 30 this year too, um, and so uh, we um, had the opportunity to. Um, co-direct, uh, co-found Taiko, one of our first big performances. I mean, we played on tires in the park, just like everybody else. Um, but one of our first big performances uh, was actually uh, Tiffany Tamaruchi brought um, Zampu Fujishi Daiko to Seattle. And um, I like my heart starts beating faster. Yeah, I like thinking about it right now, we were so stressed out. We had one piece that we could play with our, couple of drums. Um, so it was a huge, you know, it was a big audience at University of Portland. It was a big deal for us. Um, and so that was that was a really uh, important moment for us. And one of the things that's so exciting um, uh, for Portland Taiko now, I'm now on the board, um, but Tiffany Tamar Ricci is now the artistic director of Portland Taiko. Um, so I actually live in Seattle now. Um, we have connections with Seattle Matsuri Taiko as members of the Seattle Betsuin. So sometimes play a little bit with them. Um, and actually, my newest thing is I play Taiko in our Gagaku group um, at the Seattle Betsuin Temple. Very cool. Oh, Gagaku group. Awesome. 
um, well, thanks for all sharing your histories. Uh, we had another question we wanted to touch upon, um, seeing that uh, NATCR is coming to coming to your all backyard. But uh, we wanted to know what makes Tycho in the Pacific Northwest different or unique compared to other areas. So um, maybe Anne, do you want to kick us off here? Yeah, I'll get us started. Although I feel like the two, the, there are folks obviously who can speak to some of the earlier routes than me, um, but I can speak to Portland and where Portland came out of. Obviously, we're very connected to some of these, uh, you know, some of the, the founding groups. Also, Kenny Endo was very important um, for us. But what really, uh, with some of the folks I named, um, it was really a lot of those folks were Sansei, um, and then a few of us Yonsei, and really connecting to um, the Nisei were really. The Japanese Americans in Portland were really the folks who made Portland Tycho um, realized uh, from sort of a, a dream or an idea into an actual group. And I think that one of the things, uh, the Northwest is different from some other parts of the country, California in particular, um, it's predominantly white, um, you know, communities. Um, it just the, and so I think uh, there's something really important in Portland in particular about sort of rooting in, uh, uh, the Nikkei community, the Japanese American community and the histories there. Um, and then early on also uh, folks, uh, other Asian Americans uh, joining in. Um, and for in Portland, it was really rooted in um, a, a sort of uh, organizing and uh, uh, movements um, around social justice. Um, a number of our members were in, in uh, who actually were working in different kinds of organizations, social just, justice organizations. So I think that is one thing that kind of characterizes um, some of the emergence of, of um, Tycho in the Northwest that, that um, I think it exists in other places for sure. Um, um, but we came out of a kind of different um, era um, than you know, some of the original the founding groups, um, but very much um, sort of connecting to the, to the histories of those founding groups were coming out of, but in our own context um, in the Northwest. So um, I think that's, that's one uh, dynamic, um, but of course you've also heard the way that we're also, we kind of grew from and were, um, I don't know, parented by some of the original groups um, uh, in, in California. Oh, great for sharing. Hmm. That's such a interest. That's such a great rootedness, um, a uniqueness. Stan, do you want to go next? Sure. <clears throat> yeah, I would uh, echo some of what Anne was talking about. When we first started in, in the early '80s, there were still a number of Issei around, and I remember one of the most heartfelt things is after some of our performances, even though we weren't that good at that time in the early 80s but we, were, we had started creating our own music too um but some older Issei well they're all older by then but the, some Issei ladies would come up to us and like one even had tears in her eyes and they would thank us for playing and they say it just you know reminds them of home and they make it makes them so proud um to be Japanese and I think because of the World War II experience like a lot of them hadn't felt proud to be Japanese for many, many years. So that, that really had a, an a impact on us, um, particularly because like Anne was saying, <clears throat> the, the Japanese and even the, at that time, even the Asian American population wasn't that large. So, uh, and in Seattle, we have an area where we're based, which is called the International District. And it's called the International District because it's all you know, there's Japanese, Chinese, Filipinos. Uh, at one time, there are also Blacks and Jews and um, Cubans. And, you know, just a mix of people, uh, although primarily overwhelmingly Asian uh, in the area. And most of the people who were originally in Seattle Taiko Group were involved in the community, like working on the International District Summer Festival or working with the international writing for the International Examiner, the, the uh, community newspaper. Um, so it really, uh, that kind of Pan-Asian flavor started early. Like, so we had Chinese and Filipino members early on. Um, and you know, now we have Korean, Vietnamese, uh, 
Caucasian members as well. Uh, so I think that kind of more universal feel to it uh, is unique. I think um, uh, another thing about the Northwest is kind of the, initially a feeling of isolation because, you know, kind of the gravity center of Tycho was California. San Francisco was there, San Jose was there, Kenada was there, and you know other groups springing up. Um, so we felt kind of isolated up here. And back then there were no, in the 80s, you couldn't buy a, a Tycho video. There wasn't an online anything yet. Uh, the internet hadn't really appeared. Um, you know, maybe you could buy a, a VHS tape of Koto uh by the late 80s but otherwise unless you physically went to see it you couldn't you know record a, a taiko performance and get or get a perform uh recording so we felt kind of isolated so i think that helped to make us feel um like some kindred spirits so we would go up to vancouver to take workshops uh, and visit with katari taiko I know when Portland started, they came up here once or twice, and we went down there once or twice uh, just to you know do workshops together. Uh, and I think that feeling of togetherness um, uh, kind of led into doing more regional stuff. Oh, I would say that one other thing that's uh, maybe unique about the Northwest is that we generally have. Um, greater awareness and hopefully closer ties to indigenous communities because um, the indigenous communities up here are so strong uh, and so much uh, a major part of the local political and social climate. So I think there's a, at least a greater sensitivity about that, I think, than a lot of other places. Um, and we try to establish, at least some of us try to establish more ties with them too. Wow, thanks, Dan. That's um, really painting um, a really great picture of the area. Um, Shinobu? Yeah, so just uh, you know, picking up on what uh, Stan said about the indigenous aspect. And <clears throat> so um, Vancouver, the Taiko group has an umbrella group called the Vancouver Taiko Society which was uh, created right after, I think, 2002 uh, regional Taiko gathering. And, and basically we decided to create, uh, share the resource and so forth. And uh, anyway, so um, yeah, we are going back to indigenous part. So because, you know, Power Street is kind of located in the middle of uh, indigenous, uh, you know, land. And we had, uh, as far as I remember, two projects in the past 10 years with the uh, uh, indigenous, indigenous group. And one was called um, it? Against the Current, that's the, uh, the title of the uh, project. The other one was called uh, uh, fish stick, and and uh, we presented in uh, Power Street Festival. The other one was uh, what is it? Uh, uh, so there's a festival in uh, downtown East Side, and uh, anyway, so we presented those uh, two projects in the past ten years, and and basically it's a collaboration with uh, several, uh, more than several, probably uh, you know, half a dozen of uh, Taiko groups with the indigenous. And it was very powerful. And do you know what we use the piece? It's Ashra. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so um, now um, talking about uh, uh, something unique about the Northwest. 
I, I can already, uh, you know, kind of wrap up whole thing, <laughs> you know, I can tell you that, the, well, I think it's kind of obvious that how we started is it still remains, right? It's uh, inf influenced by San Francisco Taiko Dojo, and we looked up on, you know, San Jose Taiko Group. And so those are, you know, they're still there. And although, in my view, we cannot be like, you know, sunshine in California, you know, and we are rain, rain people, right? So, um, I'm sorry. Okay, uh, but um, we have about uh, how many groups in town? I cannot remember, something like 12, right? And all came, basically all came from Katari Taiko. And so it carries that kind of a, um, you know, uh, style of Taiko playing. And also, you know, probably most of us uh, compose our own music, own, own, own compositions. And, and so in that sense, it's every one of us are very unique to each other. And yeah, so <laughs> I don't know, it's a diversity. <laughs> Well, I think, you know, I think it's what you three touched upon has been really great because you're kind of painting a picture um, of the people that, um, mm -hmm. uh, the people in the place that have really influenced uh, Taiko in, in the area um, with a lot of, uh, you know, rudeness in the Japanese American experience, but also the Asian American experience um, yeah. and place of, um, you know, the, the indigenous roots in the area. Um, and how that all kind of coalesced into what Taiko in the area is mm -hmm. <laughs> is being around and being felt um, by all the different yeah. groups. So yeah, thanks so much for for sharing and painting that really vivid picture. Um, but I think there's also another really unique <laughs> part of the area too. So Roy, I'm going to hand it off to you um, for this next question. Oh, Good. yeah. Sure, thank you, Derek. Um, yeah, our next question is uh, really a we want to just um, kind of dig in a little bit to about the regional Taiko gathering that's been held up in the Northwest. And uh, just to, I guess, um, just to kind of frame that a little bit, uh, we all know that the North American Taiko Conference, the first one was held in 1997 in Los Angeles. And um, at that conference, Dwayne Ibata challenged the entire Taiko community um, that, you know, they would, um, the JACC or LA would, uh, host the next Taiko conference in two years from 97 or 99 if there was uh, regional conferences that would step up. So um, he challenged uh, basically the Taiko community to have a regional gathering. But the only group that really stepped up was the Pacific Northwest to create the regional Taiko gathering. And I believe the first one was in 1999, right? Um, so, uh, or, or the following year, 98. Uh, sorry, 98. Um, so, um, that's our question here is uh, what was what's the impact of having a regional Taiko gathering? And if you could talk a little bit about how that impacts you personally and your group and then more, and especially for the region up, up there. And Stan, can we start with you? Because you're you're pretty involved with that first one. Yeah. <clears throat> so yeah, Seattle organized that first RTG in, in 98, because after um, being at NATC, I was really uh energized and excited. And so I said, we got to have another NATC. So we got to do something locally. And uh, so I call, started calling other groups in town. And interesting is that we had known there, I think there are five or six groups at, at that point in Seattle. And we had, you know, we all kind of knew each other, but we had never really done anything together. So getting everybody to meet and actually work on our common project was kind of a, a first and kind of a breakthrough thing. Because um, we weren't like, 
you know, we didn't dislike each other, but it was kind of like, we kind of ignored each other is how I would, I would put it. Um, but then we started working together to put the RTG together. Uh, and it was a lot of work, but uh, I think, you know, we wanted to bring in the groups from Vancouver uh, and we wanted to bring in the group from Portland. Uh, so initially those were the three core areas. And, and I think everyone really enjoyed it. Everyone was excited about getting together. Uh, we, we shared, you know, performances, we shared workshops. Um, and, uh, I think that exposure to other groups and other styles and, you know, new ideas was really a stimulus for everybody who came. And it helped to establish relationships between groups across the region. But I think within each city, uh, it also helped to establish um, better relations. And for the host cities, it helps to promote Tycho in that city because you know, we would kind of advertise this is happening in the city. And it kind of makes it like, OK, so this is a center of Tycho. And people who weren't involved would say, well, what is Tycho? and kind of find that, that out. I think uh, for Seattle, you know, we actually ended up enjoying working together. So we kept meeting um, several times, you know, not quite monthly, but every other month um, through the next NATC and said, well, let's do another RTG in 2000. Um, and then we said, you know, this is a lot of work. so. Maybe we can get someone else to do it. So we got Vancouver to take the next one. And then we said, well, you know, Portland's the third city. So, so then we started rotating it. So it would, you know, make that circuit of Seattle, Vancouver, Portland, and then we just rotate. So you only have to do it once every six years. And um, that continued until what, like just before uh, COVID, I think 2018, Maybe it was the last one or 2016. Anyway, um, but I think that also enabled us in Seattle and as a region to host the 2007 NATC up here because uh, we had already had working relationships. And so uh, it was a lot of work, but every, every group in Seattle stepped up. Like one group said, okay, we can handle the volunteer uh, registration table and another group says okay we can do the the drum movements for the workshops and another group said yeah we can host the the banquet uh, the welcoming banquet um and you know a couple groups said yeah we can perform at the opening plenary so you know everybody chipped in everyone did their part and it all went fairly smoothly and I, because no, it wouldn't have happened if we hadn't worked together on doing RTGs before. And we were able to pull in drums from <laughs> Vancouver and, and Portland. Um, and, you know, without a problem, really. Like, we just contacted the people we knew already and said, hey, we're hosting. Think you could bring drums? And they said, yeah, let me see what we can do. And, and drums showed up. So... Although it might be harder to take drums across the border these days, the Canadian border. Um, but yeah, I would say those are some big impacts. Great. And, and RTG now is uh, its own organization. Is that true? or? Yeah, we formed uh, RTG, what we call RTG Seattle, so Regional Tyco Groups Seattle. Um, originally, we called the, the gathering, the regional Tyco gathering. Uh, initially, we said uh, it was going to be the Northwest Regional Tyco gathering. And then one of the Qatari members said, well, you know, I have always thought that I lived in Southwest Canada. So we said, oops, little uh, US chauvinism there. So, so we said, okay, let's just drop the, the Northwest part. We just call it regional Tyco gathering. Um, so so anyway, the Seattle groups decided, well, we like the RTG moniker, so we'll just say we're regional Tyco groups dash Seattle. And uh, we ended up incorporating as a not-for-profit uh, organization in the state of Washington in 2005. 
in sort of in preparation for the 2007 NATC. Um, and we're still doing stuff like Shoji Kometa is doing a residency at uh, University of Washington. And so uh, RTG groups have kind of stepped up to provide drums and places to, because he's doing a bunch of community workshops. And uh, I think I saw Jason Oachi on, on the participant list. So he's, he's leading, he's the key leader at UW Taiko Kai that's kind of hosting Shoji and, and organizing all these different workshops. Great, thank you, Stan. Shinobu, do you mind uh, sharing your stories? Okay, so um, as I mentioned about uh, Vancouver Taiko Society, um, probably, you know, without a uh, regional type of gathering, uh, probably it didn't really happen. So thanks for that. Um, so um, also, you know, that uh, national level uh, gathering, you know, conference, is so huge, you know, like 500, 600 participants. And uh, for my kids, they were, you know, they were very, very uh, intimidated by the number and so forth, right? And also you cannot meet every one of them, but the regional uh, size is somewhere around 150. And which is, you know, I think it's uh, much more, uh, easier to you know they interact uh, almost everyone and and also you know that the, my kids are much more you know I feel much more comfortable with that kind of number and anyway so that's one of the uh, uh, merit of a smaller you know size and <clears throat> having said uh, you know the Vancouver Taiko Society um, Last year, the government of Canada actually provided, uh, it's called the Redress uh, Legacy Funding. And so Japanese Canadian community got uh, quite a bit of money. And, and uh, so Vancouver Taiko Society actually applied for a couple of uh, projects. And so it could have been much more difficult to convince, you know, if it's only uh, one, you know, just yourself. But because of society as a whole and, you know, bigger organization, and, you know, actually we are very successful, you know. So we have two projects now. One is a kind of a composition sharing kind of a uh, project. So, at the end of this year, we will have a kind of uh, informal uh, gathering to show each other, uh, you know, the competitions. And the other one was uh, to, uh, to, to, to get the new equipment. So we had quite a, you know, substantial money to buy drums and so uh, thanks for probably you know uh, Asano US <laughs> probably they will be very thrilled you know they're gonna get a bunch of <laughs> uh, orders from uh, Vancouver side anyway um, what else um, so we have almost every other uh, months we have board meeting and uh, uh, there's another kind of a long-term project uh, it's uh, in progress which is to basically uh, build our own studio uh, so that you know all of us can share so anyway Great, that sounds exciting. Thank you. And uh, would you like to share your stories? Yeah, sure. Um, 
So, uh, the, you know, it's funny because I, uh, in preparing for this, I was touching base with um, Kelsey Furuta and um, she, we were talking about that first RTG and I, it must have been 1998. She called it in the pre-internet days. Um, <laughs> and at the time she was a member of Tsunami Taiko. Um, and so that that was a, a, a really, like, it just was a very memorable, amazing time because it was kind of the first time we kind of looked at each other in the region oh. and we're like, hey, we're our, we're our own thing. Uh, we don't always have to sort of be thinking of ourselves in relation to the groups in California. And so that was uh, like a really exciting moment. Um, and it seeded, um, you know, all kinds of uh, connections and relationships. Kelsey um, has been uh, in Portland for a, a number of years now, and she's actually now um, taking a staff role. She's the executive administrator for Portland Tyco. Um, and so it's partnering with Tiffany um, in some of the work at Portland Tyco. So, uh, you know, it, it grew from that 1998 RTG, really. Um, and we also had a, a kids group at the time uh, called Tanuki Tyco. And we actually have some of those kids, like, like Shinobu was saying, we didn't expect any of them to continue on. Um, but a couple of them have, and they are current members of Portland Tyco as well. And um, that was also a kind of pivotal moment for um, the youth group at the time too, to, uh, to you know get to play for a larger audience and also connect with some of the other youth groups at the time. Um, both, uh, especially Seattle, just because they're a little closer to us, it's sort of been our big sibling in many things. Um, and I think in like watching Seattle, but also, you know, to, to the extent that we've had the connection with Vancouver, um, like figure out that that shift when you like go from being the only group in town to now there being multiple type of groups in town and, and, and just sort of watching and learning from them, both in terms of the way that, um, you know, groups have tried to connect across the region, but also in terms of within your own city and um, trying to kind of figure that out because the we now have uh, three other groups in Portland, all of which have, you know, kind of had connections that grew um, from sort of um, relationships with Portland Taiko, but they're very different and they have different, um, you know, they have more of a kind of Japanese, uh, many of them have kind of more of a Japanese orientation, but um, really um, sort of like, uh, learning from the examples um, in Seattle and, and Vancouver of trying to, you know, trying to think about how can we, how can we um, uh, not just coexist, um, but also still find ways to, to collaborate and work together. Um, so, you know, thank you to the, <laughs> to the examples that you all provided um, as, um, as Tyco has continued to, to grow and, and proliferate. Um, it's uh, the RTG, I think is, uh, um, you know, it's, I, I think a lot, like Shinobu said, that we have a lot of uh, members who are, you know, they're working or they have kids or it's hard for them to get the, to NATC. Um, and so uh, having something that is a little bit more local um, and a little bit smaller uh, makes it a little easier um, for a broader range um, of folks in our group to um, be able to participate. We also, of course, have folks who are, um, uh, participating in NATC as well. Great. Thanks for all your responses and kind of coloring a nice picture um, of how, how you're all connected um, in the region. Um, we did have, I think at this time, we're going to open it up to questions. So if you have anything, uh, feel free to send it along. It looks like we did get one question um, in the chat. I think it was just clarifying, um, I think it's for you, Shinobu, just that there were 12 groups originated um, from Katari Taiko, Katari Taiko, and then um, maybe it's more of painting a picture uh, of how, or just how many groups there were, but I was actually wondering if Greg, um, I know there was an infographic that uh, you created from um, Shinobu's information. I wonder if we could pull that up um, as he maybe just comments on the amount of groups. I think the question is the amount of groups that came from in the area and that came from um, Katari Taiko. So Shinobu, do you want to maybe yeah. clarify how many groups so, there are in the area? As far as I know, uh, 12 groups, groups but some of them are not influenced by Qatari. So it's kind of, there's 12 groups in the area. Some of them, some of the influenced, some of them are their own 
uh, origins. Yeah, uh, that's right. For example, you know that. Uh, 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 which one was it? Okinawan group, <laughs> for mm -hmm. example. Um, oh, uh, the Okinawa Asa yeah. in Vancouver. <clears throat> yeah, got it. Great, you know, can, so is it okay? Can I ask? I'm just really curious about like these. Is some of the um, are they, do they each have a different character, or is it some of it they're like geographically distant? What like are how are they how are they related or distinct? These different these many different groups. <laughs> so. So what does so like what is the blue and the yellow? Is that groups that are connected oh, to each other or came uh, from each no. other? I think they are uh, they're different regions, right? Oh, so okay. blue is in British Columbia, yellow in Alberta. Get it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's how Derek, you did it, right? Uh, Greg, Greg, uh, Greg put together for it. Yeah. yeah. So um, the two <clears throat> infographics, um, Stan and Shinobu provided some information, and then Greg worked his magic and did these really nice um, infographics, which we're going to send um, out to the participants if you signed up um, at the end of the webinar. Um, you know, does anybody else have any any other questions? Want to ask the panelists? It's a great opportunity to um, if you have anything you want to learn about the area. Seems like there's an explosion of groups between 2000 and 2005, like all the bottom blue lines. Yeah, appear within like three years of each other. Do you have any theories about why? <laughs> God. I I don't know. Huh. Well, Anne and Stan, even for Seattle or Portland, um, wasn't there sort of a ghost spirits in certain areas at certain time spans also? Yeah, well, the, in Seattle, I would say the, the big one was uh, the collegiate Tycho groups appeared uh, in the 2010. Um, so like, oh yeah, on this graph, you see UW Tycho Kai near the bottom uh, was the first collegiate group. And then below two lines below that, Seattle University Hidaka Tycho, and then like a year later, you have Dekoboko Taiko and then Pierce College Taiko. And a couple of years after that is Tobe Taiko. So Dekoboko and Tobe are these post-collegiate groups. They were, most of them, if not all of them, were members of either the Seattle U or the University of Washington collegiate groups. And then they graduated and they still wanted to play together. And so they formed their own groups. Um, there's uh, the Pierce College and Yamato you know, Taiko kind of, orange line in the middle are um, both at community colleges and um, kind of uh, uh, appeared on their own. I'm not exactly sure how Yamato Taiko got started. Um, we just ran into them uh, and at some performance area. And then Pierce College, I believe, was started by uh, Japanese international students who were going to school there and they started, and they had played taiko at home in Japan. So they started their own group. Um, but yeah. Looks like we need to add another one. 
Yeah, it looks like uh, we have some comments coming in. There's, um, let's see, um, Dayan commented, Qatari helped provide training when Cam Loops got started. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. And then Wendy said that there's also Yumi Daiko at UPS in Tacoma. And Patrick, um, he was saying that there's a group at the university yeah, of Puget Sound. Oh, I think that's the same. Yeah, so, UPS. wow, there's a lot. <laughs> there's a lot of groups now. <laughs> yeah, and, and there's sort of a, a semi group or uh, that uh, Anya Mane started teaching some folks, uh, and I forget the name of it, but um, yeah, yeah. So I, I'm sure I, I missed one or two groups and this is and there are other groups in the state of washington that i can list at all so i feel that um yeah we'll have to add some of these to it do you know when when dear patrick do you know when those groups started and isha open title not Forming, but a community education since 2010. Okay. So it's interesting to see how different, you know, sort of like in the beginning, like earlier times, there that was like growing out of just a couple of groups. And now it's really proliferating, but the sources, you know, there's different sources. You know, some groups are just starting on their own or more connected to Japan and not so connected to the other Taiko groups. Um, and then it looks like there's different sort of niches that um, groups are are coming um, to address. Um, so things, you know, I, like I see this Isho Open Taiko. So it's not a focus on performing so much, but community education is kind of filling those different niches. That's really interesting. Um, yeah, so maybe we could keep track of some of these and then um, maybe... I don't want to assign people work to do, but it looks like there might be more in the infographic, Greg, to <laughs> to um, add in there. Um, and we're coming close to time, but I think there is just one last question. If you want to just touch upon it really quick, really, I, this is not a really quick question, but um, if you had any comments. Um, since 2016, have any of your groups felt compelled to address the anti-Asian hate through Tycho? Portland Tycho has very much so um, that there are a number of performance performances that, that Portland Tycho has been a part of um, being working with different um, groups um, in Portland. Um, and also there was a, one of the things that we talked about, we had a retreat recently. Um, there were a series of videos that we um, that uh, created and got shared um, that were a little bit more about actually people sharing their own experiences um, of, um, you know, experiencing anti-Asian racism um, um, and um, kind of being sharing kind of the personal side of it as well um, as through Tycho itself as in, in terms of performances and connecting with other organizations. Yeah, I'm not sure that we've done it explicitly. Um head on but like the local taiko groups in seattle always play for the day of remembrance programs um some of which have emphasis on just history but uh some like the one we'll be doing on uh, february 18th this year uh, are trying to connect it to uh, like uh immigrant detention that's happening today uh or the, when the muslim ban came out connecting Day of Remembrance to what, uh, how, you know, the hate that was directed at the Muslim community is reminiscent of the hate that was directed at the Japanese community um, or the hate directed towards uh, migrants crossing the border, uh, similar to the hate that we experienced. And so trying to make those connections in those programs and, and the, local taiko groups uh, have been you know out there performing at those kinds of events
Right. I think we're coming towards the end here. Um, thanks, everybody. It's been a great discussion. I wish we had more time just to ask more questions here. But thank you to everyone out there that, that, that uh, logged in to listen and participate today. We really appreciate you all being here. Um, we would like to pass this back to Greg, so you could just uh, add some last uh, some notes or uh, other announcements. Um, but to the panelists, Shinobu, Stan, and Ann, thank you so much for, for your time today. Hey, thanks everyone. Thanks. Thanks so much for uh, joining us, everyone um, who's either here on our Zoom call or who's joined us online on YouTube. Um, it's, it's been a great conversation just getting to learn a little bit more about the history of Tycho in just different places. And in this uh, this case, the Pacific Northwest or, or you know, Southwest Canada. Um, and uh, we just want to be um, uh, wanted to pass on some information about I guess um, we'll be having our um, uh, NATCR which is kind of a new program that's it's um, from TCA that started last year with our, our program in Hilo where we'll be doing um, uh, kind of highlighting um, bringing conference to different regions and and I did want to actually um, say that today actually so special announcement for everyone who's joining us we, we, we will have an application that opens tonight for uh, performing groups from the region too so so if people from uh, Vancouver people from Portland who are watching this too are interested in maybe you know performing at the um, upcoming uh, conference that'll be uh, released tonight too so thank you um, again for uh, that I want to remind everyone at the top of the program we, we mentioned that the Seattle Betsune had a, a fire recently and that we wanted to raise awareness and, and, and share um, a fire relief fund that's at the top of the chat um, here as well. Um, but I think, um, and I just guess lastly that saying that this is, you know, it's a starting point and not an ending point for uh, conversations about um, history and sharing stories. Thank you for all the, um, you know, additional information uh, that was uh, shared in the chat today. So uh, thank you very much, uh, Roy. Thank you much, uh, very much, Derek, for your leadership program and for facilitating this type of uh, webinars for us. Uh, I think it's very useful for uh, the community. And, and this will be um, um, preserved on YouTube as well. Uh, so if you needed to go back and check any of that things as well, check out uh, the TCA YouTube. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. I really appreciate your time, uh, panelists, uh, and uh, hope to see you all next time. Bye, everyone. Thank you. I will be stopping the live stream now. Okay. I could put this back up, play us out. I was supposed to cycle them at the top, didn't get <laughs> so much of that, sorry. No, it's okay. I'm glad we got to um, show it at the at the end and had some time. You need to add some Tycho, like for the sound though, in the beginning and the end. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? <laughs> Man, <laughs> missed the opportunity yeah. there. <laughs> Yeah, next time. That's a great idea, actually. <laughs> All right. Um, everyone else, I think we're going to be uh, just the panel, so you're just going to stick around um, just to kind of just uh, talk real quick. So um, thanks for joining us. Um, I think we'll be closing it to the general public real soon. So. Don't mean to kick everyone out, but just letting you know that. Thank you, everyone. Oh no, don't report. <laughs> Yeah, no. <laughs> no, they didn't do anything wrong. Uh, no, they didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think I think that's everyone else now. Yeah. Uh, let me double check. Yes, that's everyone. Yay! Thank you. That was great. That was fun. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for the facilitation. Yeah, Greg, can you take off the? Uh... Oh yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks. So thank you, everybody. It was it was a great session. Uh, sorry, it seemed like it was a little bit rushed, but we got through it all. So thank you so much.
any uh, I'd love to just real quick any feedback from you all uh well yeah I think more time would be good <laughs> yeah <clears throat> It'd be fun to integrate like maybe a little video or something if if there was more time. Like, you know, I know that's kind of fancy, yeah. but maybe people could just share, you know, like here's a 30 seconds of whatever, some of these groups at different times. It'd be fun to, mm -hmm. fun to see them. Or even photos. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, especially during, I think, the, the introductions or these different spaces, it would be kind of, we could color it a little bit more with some multimedia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and I know, um, I know yeah. for myself, if there was more time, um, I think, Anne, I saw you come off mute at one point, and I was like, oh, I wish I could turn it back, but the train is mm -hmm. going, so mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm sorry that we weren't able know. to circle back. <laughs> No, but it was all good. So really appreciate all your time and work to put this, help put this together. I think it was really important that this was done. So um, I'm glad you folks were all involved with it too. So Stan, keep us tuned on what's happening, you know, for the RTG that's coming up, um, the NATC regional. Um, let us know how we could help you in any way. And then, oh, sorry. And then, Greg, you'll send out a follow up with those infographics to those who signed up. Yeah, Is I can that... send it just to everyone who was on there. I'll send a link to the um, YouTube as well. Anything else I should send them? Um, I was. And do you have those? Are those Portland the um the videos with the anti Asian mm. hate? Oh, is that easily accessible? I wonder if we could also include that with the fundraiser as a couple just nice links um yeah i could i can dig sense. around i'm sure they're around somewhere yeah yeah um Gives i just thought that'd be kind of nice because you mentioned it and so we should it's important for people to like have mm -hmm. um but i also don't want to put too much work on you if they're <laughs> it's gonna take you too long it's just, it's just no it's just finding some links should be okay fine. All right. Well, otherwise, um, I don't know if there's no other comments, then thanks for sticking around. Um, and if you have anything else, then just email us. Um, try put something. In your... Those infographics are cool. And then I'm like, oh, we need for Portland. <laughs> I mean, it's going to be very, it's, it's a lot simpler. <laughs> well, I want, yeah. But. So Stan, uh, for yeah. the reg regional, uh, are you thinking of some kind of session like this? <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, Northwest. I don't know. Should ask Greg. I see. <laughs> what the yeah, program is going to be like? I think uh, it will be good. Would you like to meet again as a panel or invite other panelists to that? There, we could do that, Stan. I can work with you um, to just put that in the schedule too, if if that if it's something you're interested in. Well, so um, just you know that uh, we've been Vancouver Taiko Society, we've been kind of looking at you know creating our own uh, space uh, building. At the same time, you know. I thought about yeah, Katari Taiko is going to have 50th uh, anniversary in a few years, <clears throat> right? Yeah. So what are all those old, old uh, stuff go? And we need a space to, uh, you know, archive all those things, right? And anyway, you know, that's kind of a, you know, made me think, you know, <laughs> how to compile all those archive materials, right? Mm. And same for you guys, probably, you know. So as a Northwest regional taiko, <laughs> you know, uh, well, Seattle could be the center, 
<laughs> Can you take all those materials? <laughs> uh, <laughs> only if we get a building and a staff. Sounds like there needs yeah. to be some more offline conversations about um, the storage of, <laughs> of yeah. items. The regional Tycho Museum, yeah. There you Museum. go. Um, well, while I have you, I, I will let you, maybe I could just pitch a few things that we do kind of have going on. I, I, I'm not sure if it's within what their scope is, but we are partnering with Dential. They're going to be doing a um, kind of a, uh, interview, I think, of like Tycho pioneers. It's something that we're trying to been kind of working with them on. I think that's what we're really just going to turn into archival footage. But if there's any types of either if it's like some kind of data sharing or like even just like a work group on like archival <clears throat> preservation or something. And if there's something that we would like me to try to set up either with Dencho or just maybe this is the group that if you want to have a work group at uh, NHCR, um, like we can definitely make the space for that. And if you need, um, you know, other types of uh, resources, uh, you know, let, let, let me know. I'd love to help out with that. I see. And if there is a Portland list, I, I'll do the same thing and to that. And then maybe we could share those. Maybe I could add those other groups first and then maybe we, we could share those or something, uh, put them somewhere uh, more public. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, I need to circulate the list I came up with because uh, like Patrick and, and uh, Wendy are both from Tacoma. So they know the South Sound a lot better than I do. Mm -hmm. Thanks, awesome. Greg. Thank <laughs> yeah, thanks oh, thank for your you. help, Greg. <laughs> really appreciate y'all. And then, uh, you know, hope hope we can do it again soon. Let me know if there's anything else I can yeah. do in the meantime or any follow-ups I can get you. Yeah. Great. Great. Well, thank you, everyone. Thanks, yeah. yeah. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. See you Bye. soon. Bye. We'll see you.